st here okay so if you are observing here so let me first draw the chain chart okay so using a chain chart so as at time zero there are no other there is no other process so we are giving p1 the chance to enter the cpu okay so now here at time three okay if you observe okay at time three another process come okay there are two processes which has come so at time three p2 and p3 so p2 and p3 okay so the first time of three and two okay so process p1's remaining time is five because it has executed for three seconds so remaining time is five so according to preempt stf okay so we can preempt the process if a new right process is having a lesser burst time so now here we have to decide between two process p2 and p3 okay so whichever is having a lesser burst time so this is process p3 is having lesser burst time and p1 is entering a uh, is already uh, entered the cpu and which is running which is having a burst time of five so that means now we have to give a chance to p2 because it p3 it is having a lesser burst time so it has a burst time of two so three plus two it will be five okay so at time five okay at time five p4 has also arrived okay now p4 has also arrived so now p3 has finished its execution so p3 has finished its execution okay at this moment of time we have process p1 okay with a burst time of five process p2 with a burst time of three and process p4 which has just arrived with a burst time of five in the ready queue Okay, at this moment so what we are supposed to do whichever is having a lesser burst time so select that process so that is a process p2 we are going to select so that is having a burst time of three so five plus three it will be eight okay now the leftover process is p1 and p4 which is having equal burst time okay sdf criteria we are supposed to choose the process which is having a lesser burst time so whenever we are having equal burst time so go with first come first serve criteria so we'll be choosing a process p1 okay so 8 plus 5 it will be 13 so next we'll be having a process p4 so 13 plus 5 will be 18 okay so next we'll be using a waiting time okay so calculate a waiting time okay so p1 is equal to so p1 see the last occurrence p1 has entered twice in the cpu so check out the last occurrence 8 minus okay so subtract how much time it has already executed in the cpu that is 3 this duration is 3 so why we have to subtract this because we are calculating waiting time and this is the time that it has spent in the cpu so we have to subtract this time okay so that will be equal to 5 so now p2 will be equal to 5 minus it has arrived at 3 so that will be equal to 2 okay now p3 it has started at 3 it arrived at 3 so waiting time for p3 it didn't actually wait okay so its waiting time is 0 so p4 it 3 minus of okay 5 its arrival time is the 5 which is equal to 8 okay now average waiting time average waiting time will be equal to so 5 plus it is nothing but a summation of individual waiting time divided by total number of process so that will be equal to 15 divided by 4 3.75 okay now turn around time okay so turn around the time okay so will be equal to so p1 is equal to 13 minus 0 so it is a time between the submission and completion so p1 has completed at 13 so submitted at 0 so 13 minus of 0 is 13 so p2 has completed at 8 okay submitted at 3 so that will be equal to 5 so p3 has completed at 5 submitted at 3 so that will be equal to so p4 has completed at 18 okay? then it was submitted at 5 okay so that will be equal to 13 okay so now average turn around time okay so for this particular problem okay 
so a is 13 plus 5 plus 2 plus 13 divided by 4 which will be equal to 8.25 so average turnaround time will be equal to 8.25 average waiting time will be equal to 3.75 okay so now 